I'm Rob, and today we're at the yew tree in Hailing Island. From the yew tree, we start off by walking away through the car park. And out onto yew tree road where we turn left. So just off to the right of Yew Tree Road is Fleet Farm, it's a holiday caravan park, part of the St Hermans group. Uh, they've got camping as well. Uh, it's a very nice situation, backs onto a, a creek. Uh, the reviews at the moment aren't that brilliant for camping, but it looks nice, it looks tidy to me from here. At the end of the road, we turn right. It's a brown sign for more camping, look lower tie than the Fleet Farm that we've just passed. Uh, so there's a sneak peek of the camping pitches from uh, from the road passing by. They don't look too bad. I've seen worse, but then I'm not staying there. Uh, quite a nice situation in the trees there. So after a short while down the lane, there's a footpath to the right which we turn down, which tracks down the back of the campsite. So that's my other love camping, and I've, uh, I've just had a chat with a lady actually, and I said, what's it like? Because I said there's been some bad reviews, but in fairness, she said it's, uh, it's very nice. So there, you make your own mind up. Go and have a look. If you want to stay there, then stay there, but there's a lot of happy campers in there by the looks of it. Happy days, nice area, uh, it's a nice location as well, the creek goes right into the campsite, so uh, yeah, you make your own mind up. So there's a little gate from the back of the campsite, and it runs out onto the creek, which leads into uh, Chichester Harbour, and that little creek, I think it runs into the campsite a bit, you can camp around it. So what's going on here, there's a marina going in there and there's six houses being built and it's going to be a gated community. So one of the guys tells me that uh, houses are going to be 1.8 million with their own private birth. In this case you can sort of justify the cost of all the shop in an earth where it's going on. Yeah, it'd be very nice. So Trev, what do you reckon? Would you get a marina outside your house? Joking, isn't you? Other than a Morris marina. Island Island was very important in the build up to D Day, so much so there was Exercise Fabius 2 here. Now, Exercise Fabius was six different exercises along the south coast to mimic the landings for D Day. Um, happened here in May 1944. It was the 50th Northumberland that uh, invaded, if you like, Hailing Island, and it involved over 200 landing craft. So of course Hailing Island has been uh, inhabited for years and years and years. It was originally inhabited in the Iron Age and also there were invaders that did actually manage to get onto Hailing Island and, and colonise the place which of course were the Romans and there's evidence of Roman settlement here too. So there are some lovely houses that back onto the creek here. I mean look at this one, lovely long garden outbuilding back in right under the creek, its own little slipway, gorgeous. So keeping along the path and it comes away from the creek and turns inland. Just where these beautiful flowers are at the moment, look at those lovely flowers, gorgeous. So 
probably got a drunk metal heron there. <laughs> Leaning up against the flagpole. So at the end of the path away from the creek, we turn left along the road. So when you get to Creek Cottage and the road down to North Lodge and the scared pigeon, <laughs> it turn right on the road. So we're in the village of Ty and there's a modern house, there's some lovely artwork in the garden. I like the sheep. And then up by the house is a massive clothes peg. Lovely. In the little village of Ty, we come out onto the main road up to North Hailing and we're going to turn right. So that's a lovely thatched cottage there. Really, really nice. It's a very nice calm and convertible in the barn here. Gorgeous. So you can tell we're getting well into the summer now. The old uh, hay is rolled up in the old cotton reels, ready for the winter. So this road does get the odd bit of traffic down it. So just walk facing the traffic. Just walking through the little hamlet of Northney. So a nice little village here and over on the left we have the North Hailing Recreation Hall. I love what they do with the old telephone boxes. This is uh, the North Hailing Visitor Centre. And here we are, we've got lots of uh, information. So just as we pass Church Cottage we come upon St Peter's Church. So let's take a look in the uh, in the churchyard. It's a very well kept war memorial. So, 12th century church of St Peter's is open. Let's take a look. Oh, lovely little church inside. It looks inside what you expect when you uh, when you see it from the outside. Very nice. Although, having said that, I'm not a big fan of plastic chairs in churches. Call me old-fashioned, but uh, I like the old pews. Which they've got, they're by the side here. And a lovely old organ with all the organ stops and the keyboard. Hats off to people that can play an organ like that. So this is a very unlikely place to find the uh, the grave of Princess Catherine Yurivsky. She's the daughter of Alexander II of Russia. And it's a very interesting life actually. Uh, she's the illegitimate daughter of him. Um, he then went on to marry her mother and uh, then unfortunately he died and the mother and the daughter, Catherine, moved to France uh, and then Catherine moved over to here and she became a singer and she ended her life in a, a nursing home in Hailing Island and here she is, one of the last of the line of Russian royalty in St Peter's Churchyard. So unlike the walk map, I have just spotted that the footpath runs through the churchyard. It's not actually sort of marked on the map as being in the churchyard, it's a bit incongruous. Instead of going down the road and picking up the uh, footpath at the Sunflower Farm, we can go through here and this leads us onto the footpath through the gate. Morning. Morning. <laughs> So you reach the entrance to the sunflower farm to pick your own sunflowers. Very busy today. And we follow off to the right. The corner of the map, there should have been a path that led diagonally across this field, but it doesn't seem to exist. So we're carrying on on the footpath that comes up on this gravel track and 
goes round at right angles. It'll take us to the same place, but look at these lovely sunflowers. And there are loads of people here today turning out to pick them. Plenty of punters today. I like that, no bees are left in here overnight. My daughter was put off and coming on one of these uh, sunflower picking expeditions. It was very pleasant this, sunflowers to the right of us. Cotton reels to the left, lovely. Amusing is hearing the voices in amongst the sunflowers. You can't see anyone but you can hear people in there. <laughs> So as the gravel path turns round to the left, look out for the little sign along a sunflower field, or another field if you're another time of the, uh, the year, and you head along the path along there. Just make, you the, make sure you're the right side of the oopsie pile. There's no coming back if you start off on that path over by the hedge. Unless you want to be knee deep, no, waist deep in it. Well, no pumpkins growing yet, but they're flowering. They look lovely pumpkin plants, don't they? And here we go, we cross over the, uh, the nastiness. <laughs> There's a stile there in the corner. And another stile by the side of the southern water. Gibbons? Oh, look at a little bird on the post. Little Robin. Robin. Well, there's a message for life. So, when you reach a gravel road with the houses, you turn left to follow the right of way straight on. What has this got to do with Hailing Island Land Rover? Well, this is, according to the owner, Huckleberry. And Huckleberry is a Discovery, Land Rover Discovery, with the Black Pack, Discovery Sport with the Black Pack. Now the connection is that Morris Wilkes was the um, chairman of the Rover Car Company and he went on, on Anglesey to draw a picture of a vehicle in the sand that uh, he wanted the Rover Car Company to build. It was based on the Jeep um, and it turned out to be the, what is now known as the Land Rover Defender. And Morris Wilkes was born here in 1904. So at the end of the road, we cross straight over and we pick up the Hailing Billy Trail. This is Langston Harbour, and that's on the other side of Hailing Island. And the city over there, you can see, is Portsmouth. So anyway, we've picked up the Hailing Billy uh, footpath and we're going to turn left on it. And I'll tell you a bit more about the Hailing Billy in a moment. You may know about it, having seen the Langston Walk, but uh, I'll tell you some more. So the Hailing Billy line was a branch line to run from Haven to Hailing Island for the holiday makers. Um, it was operated by the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway and it opened in 1865. It hit a bit of problem when it opened though, because in order to make it cheaply they decided that rather than pay for land on the island they'd actually build it across the mud flats and make an embankment. Of course what happened was is there was lots of erosion, the sleepers rotted and so it wasn't until 1867 that the Board of Trade actually licensed it for, for passengers. Until then it had to be very slow moving goods trains. Anyway, it rumbled on over the years. Um, it was never that profitable because it's a summer trade, isn't it? You know, holiday makers and things. Um, but in 1963, it was the end of the line because up at the top of the island, there was a, a wooden railway structure at Langston and it started to rot and the uh, bridge needed replacing. And the railway company said, no, it's just not worth replacing. So close the line. So the line closed in 1963, but a lot of older holiday makers will probably remember chugging away down this line for their happy South Coast holiday at uh, Hailing. 
So we're not going down to the seafront today, but sometimes you can see windsurfers out there. And it's, it's another fact that uh, the worldwide sport of windsurfing was actually invented in Hailing Island by a, a lad called Peter Chilvers in 1958. He stuck a sail on a surfboard and that was the first um, windsurfer. He actually went through a, a court battle to uh, sort of get uh, recognised for the rights of it as well and uh, they found in his favour. So he is the first official windsurfer. I can see also over this way there were salt pans a little bit further up and salt has been an industry on the island since the 11th century although no more. Uh, there's also oyster beds there. Danger! Tidal flap can open at any time. It's a chance to be a know-it-all now. What a tidal flap is, it's literally a, a hinged flap on the end of a drainage pipe and at low tide the water can run out, push the flap open and the water can drain off the land but at high tide the water comes up over the flap and it holds it closed. That way you get the water draining off the land but you don't get the seawater washing back. See the water on this embankment. You can imagine how heavy railway trains would have eroded it. So we're going to leave the hailing billy now and head down towards West Lane. And there's a pillbox there. Uh, so we can't get in, but uh, we can have a look and we can see everything we need to see from here. I mean, these were built all around the country, especially on the coastal locations like this. Uh, so if the Germans invaded, you'd have a, a safe bit of, well, reasonably safe bit of cover to take pot shots at them. Really meant to stall them rather than stop them. But uh, there we are, a little bit of Second World War history just off of the Hailing Billy. And what a lovely spot as the Germans didn't come for the soldiers to sit and eat their sandwiches and just look out. Okay, so we come to the road and we're going to turn right. And I'm going to try this path here to see if it's a path off of the road. Okay we pop off of the handy little path that runs adjacent to the road but now we're going to have to go on the road for a short distance and we're going to turn right until we get the door lane then we're going to turn left. Invasion of the giant chickens. So yeah another pillbox and we turn left into door lane. Right, let's have a look inside. I've got the phone light. <laughs> There's no rats or anything. Oh my lord. Well, all the usual detritus in here. Let's see if we can get the camera in a bit. Very odd in places, <laughs> screen wash on the window sills, if you want to call them window sills. Traffic cones, all sorts. Not such a good position, this is the other one by the sea. And there's a heck of a lot of rubbish in here. But there we go. So it's nice to be in that quiet lane, or this quiet lane, rather than that noisy old main road there. Walking past the oak trees and the cotton reels again. I don't know what happened to the bailing machine in that instance. 
And here we are, back out the end of Door Row. It's a door lane. And back at the yew tree. Back at the yew tree, a lovely garden in the yew tree. Lovely roses. And a playhouse for the kids. And even better, an aviary. And what have we got in the aviary? Ah, little finches, I think. Ah, cute. I like budgies myself. Well, these are cute little fellas. Look at him in his nesting box. Lovely. And zebra finch over there. Anyhow, let's go and get a pint. It's a really nice pub. Something a little bit different. In um, the playhouse. Let's go in and have a look. <laughs> Wow, very eclectic. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks very much. Well, that was a lovely walk. That was uh, four and a half miles. At the east side of the island, the west side of the island, and it was lovely. The only bit it didn't take in was the beach, but uh, everyone does the beach. <laughs> anyway, very nice pub, very, very nice inside as you saw from the film. Um, thoroughly recommended, friendly staff, and uh, anyway, if you like the walk, then please like and subscribe, and uh, maybe I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, HSB, half a pint, driving. Mm -hmm.